Thanks for the introduction, Pastor Dave. Um, in researching this, there's so much to find out and to know. And I mean, you could literally turn this into a full day or half day presentation easily. So I took a lot of information, kept trying to condense it down. And I'm probably gonna move through a few things quickly today so that I can get to the most important part, which is trying to give families some tools and how to make everyone accountable and to use it um, appropriately in a Christian worldview. So we'll move through some of these slides kind of quick today, but I want to make sure that um, if you're unaware of some of the, the ways that you can monitor everyone in your family. You know, it's not just about the kids that need help and <clears throat> using the internet appropriately. It's all of us. We all need to be accountable to it. So <clears throat> if I could get a show of hands from the kids here. How many of you have, come on up front guys. Uh, of kids here, how many of you have an iPhone, cell phone, smartphone, iPad, i go ahead, you can, use your, you can raise your hand. Right, yeah. Okay, that's just about all of us, isn't it, right? How many adults have Laptops, iPhones, I, yeah, all of us, right? It's a part of our modern living nowadays. You almost can't be without it. In fact, our conversation here today before we started was complaining about how slow our internet is at home. And I don't know how many of you can remember, you kids don't have this <clears throat> problem, but you know, 15 years ago we used to plug into the wall to get internet and watch the little dude run across the screen for about five minutes <laughs> before we got to where we were going. and. Now we complain on our cell phone that we can't get our dinner reservation fast enough. So it's definitely changed over the years. Um, as a church, you know, we have a, a high view of the Holy Scripture. And due to that, as a church family, we have a high view of our youth in this church. And because of that, we want to make sure that we're doing the best we can to protect them against this. You know, these kids are maturing in stature. As you can see, many of them now are taller than their parents, and it's happening quickly. They're maturing in their thinking. We need to make sure that they're maturing in their walk with Christ as well, most importantly. You know, I have a real heart for this generation. Um, I know how hard it was for temptations when I was growing up. and We didn't have the internet. More than ever, I think the temptations are just, they're staring them in their face, literally, coming out of their pocket. And uh, so I think they have it harder than any of us to, to ward off these temptations that the world uh, brings to us. So Pastor Dave said, are Christians and technology compatible? I, I would say yes. Yes, they are. Is technology bad? Pastor Dave alerted us. No, technology is neutral. It's how we choose to use it. It can be for great things, bad things. It can greatly, greatly further the kingdom of God, but it can have devastating effects if it's used inappropriately. Like anything, as you guys know, anything that can be too good, all right? And become too much of a focus in our life and become idols. And I think phones and internet usage and those type of things can become too, too much of idols in our life. And I think as parents, we need to really guard against this. Um, I know what, even in my family, I mean, the genesis of this presentation really comes from, from us searching as a family. How are we gonna monitor our kids' internet or screen time? How are we gonna make sure we're protecting them against things that they should or shouldn't see? And that's really, you know, we're all struggling with this. And that's really where the genesis, talking to Pastor Dave, and then after the family meeting, you know, what do we do to help protect our kids against this? So this is really genesis of today's thing. <clears throat> I think I'd, I would like to equate training our kids in technology and the internet the same as to like a car. You know, obviously we wouldn't just pull out our keys, hand them to our teenage kid and say, here you go, go, go for a drive. No, we take our time, we get in the car with them, we give them lessons, we train them how to do it, we tell them, this is a privilege, not a right. If you use it wrong, it can be very dangerous. And in fact, if you use it wrong, you can get in trouble with the law. 
technology is the exact same thing, guys. So we need to make sure when we're just mindlessly handing a internet device to our kids that it can be extremely dangerous and they can get in trouble with the law with it as well. In Matthew 6, 22, Jesus tells us that uh, our eye is the lamp of the body. So if the eye is healthy, the whole body will be full of light. So these cell phone devices are windows to the world, windows to everything in the world. And if we're filling them with dark things, our bodies and our hearts are going to be full of dark things. And in the end, <clears throat> God really tells us it's a heart issue. They're concerned about our hearts. So we need to make sure we're protecting all of our hearts. Okay, so wonders and dangers of the internet. You know, there are some wonderful things that you can do with the internet. One is um, it's a great way to share information. One of the dangers in it, it's a great way to share information. Uh, you can see it's a great way to do research quickly. You know, how often, you know, in the old days we used to have to go to the library or, or if you're my generation, you went ahead Encyclopedia Britannica and you had to go open those up and now, you know, now you can sit down on your computer, get on Google and search just about anything, right? <clears throat> That's also a danger as well. Um, communication, it's a great way to, to stay, communicate with people all around the world very quickly. Um, also a danger. Something we have to watch out for. Great way to spread the gospel. Great way to go to school, guys. <clears throat> you can go to school now online. What a great way to do things. I know it's schoolwork for our kids. Um, you know, we can access their grades immediately. We know what they're doing daily online. You know, the grades are posted. The teachers are communicating. They can see the parent. I mean, you guys go in through your portals, submit your paperwork right there, or your homework. So it's really a fantastic way to, to do schoolwork nowadays. Um, some of the dangers out there is um, obviously um, electronic aggression or bullying happens online and on these phones and texting. Um, texting can be used inappropriately, which is called sexting nowadays, and it's a way to send inappropriate uh, material to each other's phones or email accounts. Um, inappropriate um, content, such as pornography, it's almost like the internet was made for it, unfortunately, and there's a lot of content out there on that. Also, impersonation and fake accounts. And this is happening very frequently. Um, we covered some of this at youth group um, the other week, and even one of the um, students there was telling us how her social media accounts had been hacked by somebody, <clears throat> and then they started um, putting posts and things out there that weren't hers about them, and that's scary. The next thing is, is, you know, there can be grown adults out there impersonating young kids and trying to talk to you and get you to do things, and it's not really who they say they are. So that's a, that's a great danger. Let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so cyberbullying, also known as electronic aggression, um, the statistics are, are up there. I don't know if you can see them really well. But it says in recent research that about 35% of teens say that they've had some form of this type of harassment. So you can imagine, you know, it used to be in the days we would pass a note or we would tell somebody something. Well, now you can literally get the list off your guys' website. I think it has all your guys' emails or phone numbers. and everything. You could literally blast something out about somebody, or blast it to one person, share with another, share with another, and next thing you know, you know, it's, it's a devastating effect. If you could, if you've ever been bullied or harassed, it's <clears throat> tough. I, I went through about in, in junior high where I was harassed quite a bit just at school, but I knew when I left and I went home that that was going to be over. Well, it doesn't end nowadays if it's on electronic, because people are continuing to send that after school to people and things. So um, it's real, it's happening here. Um, it can lead to really low self-esteem, depression. And unfortunately, there's been some people that have been so harassed and felt they had no other way out, they actually took their lives over this type of aggression. So it's, it's extremely damaging, it's real. We need to make sure this isn't occurring or talking to our kids about it, the devastating effects of it. 
I want to tell you guys something too. In 1978, I was the first kid in my class that had a calculator on his watch. <laughs> Casio calculator, I know you all saw him. Gold band, you know, and it was hard to hit the buttons, right? Oh, I was front on the frontier of technology, man. I'll tell you what. Let's go to the next slide. So this one's, we're going to talk about sexting. Um, this is real. This is happening in our communities. Um, uh, this is in the Tribune last month. Patty was nice enough to cut this out for me. But down in Buena Vista, there's about 100 kids that were involved, and these were kids ranging from um, sixth grade all the way through high school, but 100 kids involved um, sexting and sending inappropriate um, pictures of themselves around, and then they were being shared all around. Uh, about 350 um, pictures in all that were recovered during this investigation. Um, says, it is important to discuss severe consequences of sexting with teens before their lives are changed forever. And this is extremely important because in Colorado, there's only one thing that they can charge you with, and that's a class three felony. They don't have any other option as a prosecutor. If you're convicted of a class three felony for this type of content, you have to register as a sex offender. And that will follow you the rest of your life, everywhere you go. And it's not a joke, and it's happening. They ended up um, arresting all these kids, but didn't end up charging them and um, putting them in some community service and different things. And they're actually looking at the state of trying to have some different consequences to help the punishments for this that aren't a class three. But right now it is, so what's important to know is it's not just sending it. If the authorities took your phone because you got in trouble or something and found this on your phone, you can be charged with it as well. So really important, guys, really important. Take a picture, wrong. It's big trouble, all right? This isn't something to mess around with. Let's go to the next slide. This is um, a lot of these slides. If, you, if anybody wants this presentation, just let me know, and I'll know how many to print out. And then you can have, I have all the websites and different things on here that you can check out as we go through the programs. Um, this one's really hard to see up there. But basically, um, some of the statistics up there say that 17% uh, of all teens say that they um, have participated in sexting on some, on some um, way, whether that's just by word text or by picture. Um, of those that send them, about 55% of those will send that material on to somebody else. And then, you know, 55% of those send it on and on and on. So all of a sudden it proliferates very quickly. The, the material. So you might think, oh, I'm just sending this to my boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever else. Chances are it's going to get somewhere else. So you really got to watch yourself closely with this. Um, parents, and we'll go into apps and stuff later. That's, that's applications for Dave. You may not know this. Also known as APKs. Um, speaking of calculators, right? I have one on my phone now. Isn't this cool? And look at this calculator. It adds, it subtracts, it does all kinds of great things. But then when I put in this special code that I put in it, oh my goodness, what happens? My secret vault of pictures. I have one in here. It's a, a weasel riding on a bird. <laughs> if you've been to Reach or in youth group, you know all about what that, that means. So we need to be careful what our kids, what applications they have on their phone. This is what they're calling ghost apps nowadays. And ghost apps are just that. It appears to be something innocent, but when your kid programs in their special code, boom, now they're into a whole secret vault world of things. So I will have some, uh, hopefully some insightful help for you guys to be able to monitor that here coming up. But something to be thinking about. It's real, it's, it's scary. All right, let's go to the next one. So we're gonna mention um, pornography. Um, real danger. Um, the, you know, some estimates say that over 40% of the content on the internet is pornography in some way or, or else. Um, very high statistic, very scary. 
Um, if you'll go to that first website, Dwayne, um, the headlines from um, them say, porn sites get more visitors than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined daily. This year, I just started this website up at the beginning of this presentation. And if you can see that, there's already been over $5 million spent on pornography since we started this presentation this morning. That over mm, about 50, let's see, 50 million people have viewed pornography since the beginning of this slide presentation. So crazy statistics. It's real. They're targeting us. They're targeting anybody that goes on the internet. You know, the thing that you need to realize is this just isn't you intentionally trying to find this stuff. You can unintentionally find this stuff very easy by putting in a bad search in your search engine and an innocent search and bam, all of a sudden pops up. That's where the hearts of our kids, you know, we need to be talking about this, where they need to be able to say, I'm not gonna click on that, because I know that's not right. They need to be able to have those tools mentally to be able to resist, because it's gonna be a lifelong thing for, all, for them and for all of us. But I will later come up with some tools that will help kind of filter out any of that type of content maybe coming in your home too. But it's good to give these tools because you don't know what they're going to see when they're on their cell phone, they're on their friend's Wi-Fi, something else. They still got to be able to have the accountability to know not to be on this, this type of stuff. And it's real and it's scary. Um, this website's up there, so if you guys want to see it, you know, and I think it's important to note that if you're looking at this stuff or it seems innocent, but it's really not. Pornography has devastating effects in our world. This demand for this type of stuff is what's causing sex trafficking going on in our world. Young women are being kidnapped and forced into this industry. And there's just some horrible, horrible stories out there about these effects. So it's just not innocently looking at a picture. You're promoting a whole industry that's promoting terrible, terrible atrocities. So, all right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. So, let's get into, look, I got, a, I got a smart watch. It has a calculator on it, too. Yeah, that's right, you know. That's right. I can take pictures with it. I can do that. It's fun. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide. So, what does the Bible say? Um, part of this, I, you know, when I was doing this, I was fascinated by it. I'm a kind of a technology junkie and find these kind of things very interesting. And then I said, well, at least Jesse might be interested because he's kind of that way. So I went ahead and threw this in. <laughs> so it says in Daniel 12, it tells us that in the end times that there will be a great increase in knowledge. Well, I think that we're experiencing that quite well. Um, in the early 1900s, they were estimating that the um, human knowledge base doubled about once every hundred years. So about once a century, what humans knew kind of doubled, right? Well, in 2013, the estimation was that the human knowledge base was doubling every 12 months. So once a year. So you think double, 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 you know, that's a lot of information. I'm not saying it's all great information, our good, our good knowledge, but our knowledge base is increasing that much. IBM came out with, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Watson or supercomputers and stuff they're building that can compute, you know, extremely fast. They're saying that shortly that we'll be doubling our knowledge base every 12 hours. So is there an increase in knowledge? Yes, I think that uh, this is coming true right before our eyes on our time, guys. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead to the next slide. So I wanted to give you a comparison by scale. So one megabyte, if you, that's about the size of a novel, on information. It's about the size of an ant up there on the bottom. Now if you multiply that times a thousand, you get to a gigabyte. And that's about the information in the human genome. So a good bit of information, right? A thousand times a megabyte. 
viewed by size compared to an ant that's about the height of a short person. Multiply that times a thousand, you get to a terabyte. It's about um, all the annual literature that's produced in a year, it's about a, a terabyte. And you get by size, you know, from a female woman to the length of uh, Auckland Harbor Bridge. So, pretty big, right? Multiply that times a thousand, you get to a, a petabyte, which is about the size of New Zealand, which they say is all the US academic research libraries put into one. You can put on a petabyte. From there, you get to an exabyte times another thousand, which is about the diameter of the sun in information. And they say that equates to about two thirds of the annual production of information nowadays. That's amazing. And in doing this research, something really interesting, there was a scientist on there who's trying to map the entire human brain. And he says by the time we map the entire human brain, which we don't even know if we can do yet, he said there will be, billion, it will be billions of petabytes to map the human brain. So we've got an amazing computer given to us by God that may not even be able to be, able to be mapped. It's fascinating. All right, so since we're running tight, I've got uh, some different Bible verses, guys, that kind of go towards these. You know, Job, of course, um, I'll have, uh, I'll make a covenant with my eyes. What a great thing, right? Make a covenant with your eyes, not to look on this material. Um, John, uh, Colossians, see to that no one takes you captive by philosophy, empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells in bodily, and you have been filled with him who is the head of all authority. A whole bunch of these, I'm not going to go through each one, but I'll, if you want this presentation, they're great ones to discuss with your kids about what's going on. Let's go to the next one here. So we have to be careful. We need to be set apart. 1 John 2.15, it's great on Psalms. I'll make, uh, I'll turn my eyes from looking on um, anything worthless. It's another great one to, to live by, right? Great Proverbs. Romans uh, 6.12, set out, uh, you know, I'll let no sin reign on my uh, mortal body, you know. So I mean, there's some, there's so many scriptures, and I did this like you could take just volumes of scriptures, but there's a lot out there. Let's go to the next one there. Do everything in the glory of God. So whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it the glory of God. Amen. All right. Next one. Reminders. Um, you know, we read in youth group the other night. We read uh, Romans 1, 18 through 32. Just a great block. If you haven't. See, uh, read it in a while or anything, parents. Read through that with your kids. Talks about just what is going on in our world today. It is just a fabulous set of scriptures. You know, therefore be imitators of God, beloved children. Uh, let's see. Uh, therefore, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Great scriptures. All right, let's go to the next one. Same ones here. Uh, 1 Timothy 4.12. I always like uh, it's kind of hard to see on there. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example of speech and conduct and love and faith and purity. One of my favorite scriptures there. All right. Let's go to the next one. So we're going to get to well, practical advice, of course. Take it to heart. So what are we going to do about how we manage our kids with this technology? First advice is get help. All right. If you're not technically savvy or not really sure how to set this up, Talk to someone in your family that might be. Talk to your kids. They can probably help you. <laughs> but what the, the main thing is, is get in the know. You need to be in the know that you need to be monitoring this on your system. You need to be monitoring each other and need to be accountable to each other. All right, and so we're going to go over some of these practical solutions and some of these software solutions now. First thing to do is, um, Make a family plan. Do you guys have a family plan in your household on how you're appropriately to use the internet? Raise your hand if you do. We're actually working on ours right now. Um, one of the great things to do, think about, consider a, a family contract to online safety and phone use. 
You, you know, each family's gonna be different, guys. Uh, what works for my family may not work for your family. But you need to come up with the plan that works for your family. On this one, child signs, parent signs, right? We're all accountable on this. Then they know if something goes wrong or they're doing something wrong, you said you weren't gonna do this. Hand me your phone, you signed it. You know that you're not supposed to be doing this, right? Um, there's, a, there's a few different ones. I put a website up there. It has some uh, examples that you can do. You know, there's a child's pledge, a parent's pledge to the child. Um, there's one specifically just for teens in case you don't have um, the younger ones. Um, I particularly like this one. It says, um, number six says, if they need my help, I'll assist my parents, teachers, or others to use technology. <laughs> you can make them sign that. Think about a family plan. Um, put a family contract. Um, one of the things that we do in our house that I think is a good idea too is what we call an open device policy. So my phone's out in the open. Anyone's allowed to pick it up and look at what's on there. All right? I know that my six-year-old daughter may pick it up and look at it. No problem. My wife at any time. She can look at my text. She can look at me. I don't care. Right? That keeping each other accountable. Now I've got to keep the ghost apps off, right? I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the next slide here. Um, there are some practical um, advice out there. I put this one up. This is from Dr. Charles Fay. It's called Technology and Kids. Um, it goes through like a 52 um, discussion topic, so you kind of do once a week with your kids, and it's really about getting these topics out in the open and talking with your kids about them. Um, I know for us, and I know many of your parents out there probably use some of the love and logic stuff, and that's, the, that's these guys, Dr. Charles Fay. Very good. Um, I snooping on your kids, and I, I was supposed to bring one of these up. Um, we have some of these handouts for you guys. Um, let me grab it just so you can see what it looks like. Through modern technology, you'll be able to edit that little exit out of there. <laughs> so this is called eye snooping on your kids. And um, it's full of some really great practical advice. Parenting in an internet world um, goes through kind of talking about making, <laughs> making family plans, different things that you can do, what you do if you catch your kids, maybe you know falling in this area, how, how you can handle that, um, how you can work through it, and it's definitely doing it through um, examining their heart and through love. Guys, you know, we gotta love our kids through these problems. We're all sinners and we're all prone to fall. And we're putting some powerful technology in their hands, so we need to watch this. Okay, so I think we have, oh look, I think we have 20 or 30 of these. So if you want one of these, by all means, grab it. Take it home, read it, it's great. Okay, next slide. So there's some sof software help out there, guys. Um, this one is called OpenDNS. If you'll go to the website, um, should be the second tab on here. Um, this one restricts um, websites on your entire um, Wi-Fi router. So anything that connects to your Wi-Fi router, you can put these filters on. So it'll block um, proxy servers. Proxy servers are used a lot in the pornographic industry. Um, so you can block those. You can go in there and block out even whitelisted sites. So if you don't want them on Facebook or some YouTube or whatever, you can go on there and say, block that. So anytime they try to access it, it'll filter it out. Um, so very cheap. Uh, let's see, go down a little bit. It looks a little different. Oh, I'm sorry, go to the third page. Th there's your parents' pledge, safekids.com. So there's, uh, you can print those out, different PDFs or change them, for you guys. Um, so they do have, go down just a little bit more on that site. Um, so you can see it kind of just doesn't protect your um, home computer, but that you can set it up so it protects anything else that might be con connecting to your Wi-Fi. Go down a little bit more. Um, 
a little bit more. I think it has a matrix there is. So there's some, that first one, the family shield, I think is free. And then if you get the VIP section over there, you can customize your filtering and do some other things on there to help protect your website. Pretty inexpensive, pretty easy to set up. So not only protecting you know, your family in your home, but if you have friends and people coming over for sleepovers or anything else that might get on your network, you wanna make sure that you know, where your kid's gonna slip isn't gonna be in your house, right? If some friends are coming over, so important. Okay, so we're gonna to go to, and actually if you just wanna to flick to the next slide, we'll go that way. Yeah, next tab there, there you go. Okay, so Net Nanny is another one that's very popular out there. It's kind of the highest rated one on the websites out there. And this one um, does all kinds of things. It effectively um, regulates your home Wi-Fi. You can also um, put on it where you can view their emails. You can view the social um, media sites that they're going on. You can view, it will actually print out reports. You can set up things to tell you if they do go on something, then it alerts you what they're on. So these are some really nice, and I know these kids are loving this stuff, right? This is great, guys. All right, all right. I know, they're all here. <laughs> this isn't about you, too. You know, this might be your mom checking on your dad. I don't know, you know, it might be your dad checking on your mom. I don't know. This is accountability for the whole family, guys, and that's what's important to know. It's just, we're, we're trying to protect our, our um, from ourselves. So check out Net Nanny. It's uh, I think it's like thirty by or twenty eight ninety nine a year, but that you can put all your devices on it and set these filterings on all your devices, which is really nice. And I think it covers um, all the formats, including uh, including Kindles. So I know Kindle Fire is on a little bit different one than operating system, but also does OIS and Android and uh, Windows too. So. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, Covenant Eyes is the next one. So, um, smarter parenting, it says there, is to know what your kids do online and talking to them about it. So this one's kind of um, protects all of your um, devices as well. They also protect them when they leave the home. So if they go on to um, just the internet on the cellular internet or anything, you can still have these filters on their phone and it can still alert you. And then it will give you, it's what they call accountability software. I think that's a great name for it. And it will give you reports daily, um, which I think is kind of nice. Um, you know, you might, uh, and I think, is it Covenant Eyes? Oh, coming up, Cyber Troll next. Um, the one coming up next, under Cyber Patrol. This one's kind of nice because you can set it for different levels. So if you want to set restrictions for your six-year-old, you can put more restrictions. But as your kids get older and you're trying to let the leash out a little bit and let them be more mature, you can set the limits a little bit differently. So that's kind of nice on this one because you can set accounts up for each person and kind of limit what you want for each person on those accounts. So that one's pretty nice. It's um, pretty inexpensive too. I think it's um, 40 bucks a year for that prescription. Yep. And so it's a very valuable tool as well. Go to the, I'm gonna go back to my slide program actually for a second. Go down a few slides here. All right, so um, there's some other ones out there, McPhee, Safe Eyes, um, Web Watcher. There's a few things. You gotta figure out what works best for your family. You know, in our family we have, um, at least Chase has a, has a phone, that has internet access outside of the house. Taylor, unfortunately, does not have a phone, but she has an iPad. There you go. So being able to dial in for you guys the protection you need for which devices you're just gonna have to kind of go through these and say, oh, this one kind of works for us. All right, let's go to the next slide. Um, so mobile phone applications, apps, Dave, yeah. 
We'll go back to the website. So there's some really cool ones out here, guys. And I know the, the, I don't know the boys and girls in there are going to really love these. So go to the next, the next tab there. OK, for parents. So this is actually an app that you put on their phone. Go ahead and go down a little bit on that site. Um, so it is for both Android and phone. OK, go there. So guys, on this app, you can set up the thing so if it's in motion, the phone turns off. So if they're in their car, it locks their phone from being used for texting or anything like that. Extremely valuable, I think, because it's a, they said that um, texting while driving is worse than drunk driving. If you're that distracted doing it, and it's extremely dangerous. Um, you can get arrival alerts. So if they say, hey, I'm going to Johnny's house, you know where Johnny's house is, you program it. When they get to Johnny's, it alerts you. They're at Johnny's. Um, you can locate your child's phone through the portal. So if they say, hey, um, we're going to the movies, and you just want to double check because you love your kids, want to make sure they're at a safe place, <laughs> you can check that and know that they're at the movies. Mm -hmm. um, you will be alerted if they try to tamper or take these off the phone or try to change the settings, which you're putting on. So you'd be alerted to that, yes. You can monitor text, calls, and web activity. So they're at Johnny's and they're doing something and it alerts you, hey, John, at Johnny's, they're doing this. And it might just be texting their friends and everything's fine, but you can at least check that. Um, go down a little bit more. Um, so you can, set, you can put it on there. This is kind of cool, an emergency alert. So maybe they're at Johnny's and unbeknownst to them, a really cool, fun party breaks out. But they want to get out of there. They can actually hit this button without alerting anybody seeing them that they're trying to do it. And they can tell them they're in an unsafe environment and need to leave. Um, go down, I'm not sure if it's this website. Let's go down a little bit more. Um, you can also set up geo, what they call geofences. So they say, um, you know, during the school day, they're supposed to be in this square mile area. And if they leave it, it alerts you. Hey, they're outside where they're supposed to be. So kind of another powerful, nice tool. I would have never thought about ditching or going away from high school. Uh, my parents would have never needed this. But just in case you do. Yeah, they would be like, give me that Casio watch. You. <laughs> or my smart watch here. <laughs> so, you know, there's just a lot of nice safeguards that go with this. And, you know, we're just, I think sometimes we forget, and I know it was easy for us, just to, we, we just handed Chase a cell phone and never said anything about the internet never said anything about how to use it, never said this is dangerous, this can be whatever. I mean, we have now. Just in case you wonder, we have now. But you know, we didn't really think about it just because, hey, all my friends are getting phones this year. Can I get a phone? Well, you know, you know yeah, I want you to be like your friends. You need a phone. You know? We didn't think about it. We just gave it to them. You don't r realize that in their hand, is an extremely powerful computer with more computing power than the computers they sent people to the moon on. You know, and they can see anything and everything immediately, whether they're on your Wi-Fi network or right on a cell phone tower. You know? So these are just nice tools, especially if we have some of the younger ones on and you need to start once they get a phone. This is how we appropriately use a phone. All right, and I'm gonna set up these check marks for it. Go to, an, there's another app called Parental Board. It's on the next tab. And this one's um, very similar, um, has a few different features. Um, you, know, you locate and track, set up geofences, manage applications, manage phone calls, text messages, see what they're browsing, emergency alarms. Uh, and go down, one of these had a nice little video, I thought. Go back to the four parents one. Go down a little bit. Yep, there it is. 
Are you able to hit play on that? And we'll just let this go through and tell you how this thing kind of works. Oh, can't hear. I guess we don't have volume. His phone while driving, despite the fact that he knows using a phone while driving, makes him 23 times more likely to cause an accident. Even though today's young drivers are asked to sign pledges to not text and drive, changing any behavior can be hard. Fortunately, technology can help. Travis's parents installed the Lifesaver app to eliminate Travis's distracted driving behavior. Now, Lifesaver automatically locks Travis's phone while driving. When the car stops, Lifesaver unlocks the phone in seconds. That is how you stop distracted driving behavior. As Travis's parents come to trust his new safe driving habits, they can change settings such as enabling the emergency unlock feature for when Travis is a passenger in the car. Now, when Travis makes a call or texts while in a car, or if he tries to disable the Lifesaver app, Travis's parents will receive a notification. Monitoring gives Travis's parents peace of mind, but what's in it for Travis? Travis's parents can also allow him to earn rewards for his safe driving behavior. Let Lifesaver help you stop texting and driving behavior through monitoring and rewards and give you peace of mind that your loved ones are driving safely. So just one of the features, I know a lot of the kids right now are getting to driving age and I think, I think this is even helpful for a lot of adults to have this type of app that, you know, I drive back and forth to Denver. I know Tim, every day you're driving back for the Denver and all I see is people driving with their phones right next to the steering wheel and the whole way down they're going. And I saw a gal just pile into the back of somebody because everything's coming to a stop and she comes flying past me and I'm like, I don't think she sees it. It's stopping up here until traffic stopped her and she had the phone in her hand and the police will check that. You know, they'll check that. They'll check if you're on your phone during that accident. So um, it's a good, it's good for all of us to know that that's a very unsafe thing to do. Okay, let's go to the next one. Other do's. Um, oh, and some of these apps you can do that too. You can set screen time. So they can go on it and it will, let's say you put an hour or two or whatever it is that, for your kid that you're putting on. And it'll start a timer. And then if they even get off of it, it just kind of stops the timer to get back on it. So it's not just like it's a solid hour. You got this hour, you better do it or you're done. It'll just keep track as they go on and off. And then once that time limits it, it shuts the device off. So another nice feature of some of these apps um, as you're going through, you might want to look at. Um, Monitor social media websites um, in your kids' sites. I think that's really important um, if you're not doing that to frequently look at what's being posted, not only maybe by your kids, but maybe their friends and give you some insight with uh, the people that they're hanging out with. Um, you might want to think about setting some of their privacy settings in their social media to friends only. Um, some of these things, some of these uh, things you post are just public, and anybody can see them, and then try to contact them, and then you can get into predator situations or impersonation situations. So you want to be careful with that. Um, I would, if your kids are on social media, insist on having their passwords, just so you can check up. Say this is a privilege; it's not a right that you have Facebook or Instagram or whichever these are. It's a privilege, and if you're going to inappropriately use it, it's going to be taken away. So I need to know what's going on there. So I would insist on that. Um, keep testing your protection. So whatever you put in, if there's an update in software or something, and um, you haven't updated, you know, because they have new releases or something to, you know, combat uh, whatever new release of OIS or whatever has come out, keep checking, make sure it's it's in force. Um, be wise concerning sleepovers or friends' houses. Um, you might have really good controls and things inside your house and even on their mobile phones, but they go to Johnny's house and Johnny has unrestricted internet access on his Xbox and on his iPad. Whatever else, you know, they, they, they may get to it. So just, just be wise about that. Um, you know, so much of these kids don't only do by text, they do by video. 
they have FaceTime, they have Skype, they have everything. Some of those apps will monitor that as well. So um, something, um, Snapchat is a especially scary. I don't know if you guys know about that application very much, but it's an application where you can make a very short video and you can send it out to friends and then once it's seen, it erases. But I know Snapchat had a really bad um, publicity over that and there are ways for parents now and stuff to be able to check some of those up. Yeah. Save it. And yeah. That picture is there forever and it now circulates every school in the county. And just the common misconception of that, I've seen yeah. high school girls devastated. And once it's out there, right? You can't take it back, you know, and you can't take back what someone's seen. When it's, it's out there. Um, you know, I had a conversation with an attorney. Uh, He's actually in this community, he's a good, really good guy, but he was talking about the differences nowadays versus when he was in college. When he was in college, a girl had a kind of funny picture taken at a party. It actually got into the yearbook somehow. Parents found out that this picture got put in the yearbook. They got an injunction with the courts. Even though all the yearbooks have been printed, before they handed out, they were able to get this picture kind of scrubbed, basically, somehow by some super great sticker they put over the top of it or something that they could destroy it um, if they try to take it off. So he said, you know, that was 25 years ago and we were able to stop it. Today, you get something out there, it's out there. People can find it. It's really important for you guys to know, you might only be 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, thinking, oh, I'm just sending some funny material or a funny cartoon on Facebook or think it's you know harmless. What we need to understand is uh, most big corporations now, you can go in, you can interview, you could have all the right uh, education, be the best guy to interview, they can go, that's our guy, we want to hire them, and then HR runs their Facebook or something else and they find something that maybe you posted 10 years ago. And they're gonna go, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we can trust this guy in, inside our, our organization. It can cost you. So once it's out there, it's out there. So you really need to be careful how they're using it. So important things. Uh, last slide here. All right, so biggest thing is, is like anything else that's worthwhile, what do you have to do? It's a verb, it's an action, right? Take action, guys. Start your plan. Um, start your family plan, update it appropriately. Um, start your protection immediately. It's not too late, even if your kids or people have these phones without these protections. Start them now. Discuss why you're doing it. Um, monitor, monitor, monitor. So you're just going to have to be active and watching what your kids are doing with this technology, right? Just like you would monitor them if they were driving down I-85 at 60 miles an hour, right? You wouldn't do that. Not in Eaton, right? No. Up oh, and keep the conversation going. Just keep talking to your kids about this. You know, and keep it, keep it um, open and fluid so they understand, you know. None of these things are because we're just trying to be oppressive or, or mean or anything else. It's about protecting you Going back to what this tells us to guard our heart, guard our eyes, guys. It's our life manual. God wrote it and gave it to us for a reason so that uh, we can live a happy and productive life. A lot of these things in here can lead, you know, and there's on these websites a lot of different testimonials from people that had addictions to pornography and other things, and it's devastating. It's devastating. For not only for the people that get addicted to it, but to what happens to the women that get trafficked and things into this industry. So it's, it's protection for all of us. All right. Okay. That's my presentation. Uh, I have 
if you want the, um, the presentation, let me know. I can either email it to you or I can make a copy so that you have those different websites and things on there. Oh, they'll put it online. Technology, isn't it great? Yeah, all right. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's wrap it up in prayer here, guys. Dear Heavenly Father, um, creator of this universe, thank you for um, being our shepherd, Lord. Um, you're faithful yesterday, today, and tomorrow, Lord. Lord, we're sinners, but you sent your son to this earth to live a perfect life. He uh, was crucified on a cross for our sins, Lord, so that we can be forgiven. We can't thank you enough for that, Lord. If we've fallen in the past, if we've fallen, we just ask for your repentance, Lord, and, and your grace washes over us and, and can clean us white as snow again, Lord, and thank you for that. Thank you for um, the ability that um, these kids and have and the ability to, to use this technology, Lord. We just want to give them a heart where they'll they'll use it appropriately and something that the lifelong habits will be reinforced uh, through their youth, Lord. Lord, we, uh, we are praying that uh, these kids would come to know you, that they will have a heart for you, that uh, their eyes would be lit with your light, Lord. That's what our, our prayer is for you. Change our hearts, Lord. Please, uh, if we're truly repentant, we know that the grace upon grace, Lord, and, and grace wins every time. We thank you for your love and your shepherdship in our life. Through your great and holy name, Jesus Christ, amen.